I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. And I've got to say I'm delighted to be joined for the first time by Miss Bree Wright. Bree, first and foremost, how's things? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very, very good. It's uh, Sunday Sunday afternoon now. I've done Sunday morning in the gym, so I feel like I'm you know, having a productive Sunday. <laughs> a good Sunday. I'm here at four o'clock, so oh. I'm just... Well, listen, let's just jump straight to it then. Yeah, um, obviously your manager, Jamie Sheldon, messaged me and... Uh, Obviously, he's saying good, some good things about you. Now, for people that might not know who Bree Wright is, can you just break down your sort of amateur career and sort of like help your pro record so far? Um, amateur career, I did a bit when I was younger, around 16, and then left the sport for like eight years, come back. I had a fight back, won that, and then went into championships, uh, development ones, won them, and then decided, because I'm obviously 26, there's no point like waiting about to do what we Amateurs will just push to go pro. So we won um, championships in December and then turned professional in January this year. And then I've had two professional fights since and bought one and both. Well, that's it. You've got a third fight coming up, I believe, in November. Uh, so the, you're, you're getting the fights in, you're clocking the wins. And with this sort of like, although women's boxing right now is is, is taken off. Like I said to you before, I pushed record, we've just had mega fights with Clarissa Shields and Savannah Marshall. And then back in April, we had Katie Taylor against Amanda Serrano. But the depth of talent isn't quite there, but they seem to be pushing you quite quick and, and having your third fight this year already. Yeah, yeah. To be honest with you, I'm buzzing to be staying active because like with COVID and that, I've seen like a lot of gym friends not being able to get out and fight. And it's obviously, it's a struggle, but I've got a good management team who are getting me out, getting me busy and getting me my experience that I need. Sheffield's first female professional boxer. Um, it sounds good, but I think yeah. Sheffield's first female world champion sounds better. Do you agree? 100%. I'm manifesting it. I'll get it one day. Well, that's it. You manifest it. But like I said to you, you're, are you welterweight just now? Uh, right? Yeah. Well, that welterweight, so you, you could probably come down to super lightweight, maybe go up to super welterweight. And that weight class right now, when you look at the McCaskills and Chantel Cameron... It's a, it's a dangerous division and a talented division with Tasha Jonas being there thereabouts as well. Um, do you know what I mean? So it's a, it's a great division divisions to be in. So you must be excited. I am really excited. Like you say, like, uh, talent is booming at these weights. So you're only going to get the best fights. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to when I'm around like them times to get in them big fights with them, with them women. That's what I'm saying. When you look at the, like I said to you, Savannah Marshall, Clarissa Shields, Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano, two mega fights this year already in women's boxing. When you look at these mega fights and you said you manifest becoming a world champion, but when you, when you look at your, when you look, when you envision yourself becoming a world champion, do you envision it being these mega fights in Sheffield, headlining, headlining your own show against a, against a Tasha Jonas or a Casco or Chantel Cameron? Is that how you see it? I don't really see a name. I just see me winning. That's all I ever see. I don't think I don't. I'm not phased by whoever it will be, mm-hmm. whoever it will be. But I just know that hopefully one day we'll fetch it into like Sheffield. Hopefully, fill Sheffield United ground, and then we'll raise the belt there. When it, when in terms of boxers coming out of Sheffield, with, with Prince Nazim to name, and obviously you've got Johnny Nelson, who was a world champion out the Engel Gym, and Kel Brook. You've got young Dalton Smith, who's probably in a lot of people's eyes, a lot of people's mouths right now to become a world champion in his own right. So Sheffield's got a rich history when it comes to world champions, and uh, and it's a it's a hard city, it's a tough city. So for you to chop your name in that, how what does that mean to you? It means everything, like you said. Like we've got some good talent coming through. We've also got, I think personally for my gym, there's a, another fighter called Shaquille Thompson who's. Mm. Yeah, so he will definitely be a world champion if he gets the right opportunities because he's honestly he's a beast. I just can't wait for him to showcase his skills. We're just going to showcase your skills again on, on November. Now you've got that TKO on your foot, your debut. You went the distance in your second fight. What can we expect in this one? 
Honestly, I'm training like an absolute beast. I've got good sparring for this one. Um, I've had a brilliant opportunity to go get some rounds with Tasha, which I really appreciate. So um, I've got some more with her coming next week. So I'm just soaking it all up, getting all the experience and just really enjoying myself at the minute. But I don't go in to look for a stoppage. It, like, I'm hoping it just comes obviously naturally. But I just go in and do what I've got to do. However I win, see how it comes. Yeah, you said that you had eight years out of the sport and then you came back and then obviously you said about the amateur game and jumping straight into the programme because you were 26 years old. Um, has it been tough to to obviously, people talk about ring rust, but having that long period out and then jump, having a little bit more and then jumping straight into the pro ranks, has it been tough to adjust to get back to that sort of fighting style? To be honest we are. it's always ever been like mental with me. So mm -hmm. I'm in a good state, like a good state mentally. So it don't matter what ring it is, like whether it's amateur or pro, like I know what I'm coming to do. So I, to be honest with you, I didn't really have any ring rust. Do you know what I mean? Like in the first fight back, I was just buzzing. I'm just training my, like training non-stop and just ready for whatever. So when I get in there, I'm not feeling rusty because I'm sparring with all the boys. I'm just feeling like I'm going to get in there, I'm going to do my job, what I've been training to do. Because like when you're in the gym, you're doing it every day. Mm -hmm. I live boxing, so I'm sparring all the time. I'm in the gym all the time. So it's just second nature to just, just get in there. It's just a ring, but it's just a different venue. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, that's that's a great mentality to, to have as well. And like I said to you, I, I as, as well when it comes to like women's boxing, the the even though it's booming right now, when the girls are putting on tremendous fights, uh, even through the lockdown stage and stuff like that. And like I said, the two major fights that happened this year. For you, when you look into twenty twenty three, I I know you said you manifest, you said manifest stuff there. What do you see happening in twenty twenty three? Where would you like to be in your career? In my career, I'd like to be um, pushing on. I, w I wouldn't say we'd be ready for anything major, but I'm hoping to get like a lot, a few more fights in, and hopefully challenge one of British girls. Uh, get get a fight in with any of those, you know. Get like, it's only good for a sport because I think the fight with Clarissa and Savannah were absolutely amazing, and mm -hmm. it's good to see like the level of what the girls are at. So it'd be, I think, if we've both got the right backing, whatever female it is, it'd be a good. Another good show, do you know, for British boxing. Definitely. And going back to that show, you mentioned Clarissa and you said that you you, you sparred Tasha Jonas. Now, after that fight with Clarissa, there was talk about her fighting Tasha Jonas and Ta Tasha Jonas saying she'll go up and fight Clarissa Shields. Like I, that, like they say, you, you girls just jump wherever the fight is. You you, you yeah. have a weight class, but you, you don't mind jumping up or going down. So how do you see that fight? Can you see it happening? And if it does, how do you see it? I see it as, do you know what? I just got so much respect for Tasha because she will literally jump in with anyone. Like, she come back after a long period of time and she, she, she'll she just get in and fight anybody and I absolutely love that. She's obviously got a lot of experience being on GB and she's gone to all sorts of tournaments and being chucked in with a weather. So I just really respect her for getting in with anyone, to be fair, because there's not that many people that will just jump in like there's a lot of people that I think handpick their fights they've chosen from very well whereas she's just like she watched um Clarissa Shields and then she's like yeah I'll fight I'll, I, yeah. I just love that mentality do you have that mentality would you jump in with girls bigger than you and if the opportunity came 100 percent like we're from Sheffield aren't we <laughs> we're from Reddy. Ready go it don't matter well, I'm Scottish man I'm rough as it comes so don't worry about that eh uh, yeah, Katie Taylor's fighting this weekend as well. And like I mentioned the Serrano fight, but she's fighting this weekend. And there's, there's talks about the, the Amanda Serrano rematch happening in Ireland, which will be good. But yeah, just your thoughts on, on Katie Taylor. I mean, she's headlining another card. What she's done for women's boxing. Oh, she's literally amazing, to be fair. Like, I've watched her, for, I watched her in win 2012 Olympics. She's just she just set pace in the bar, aren't she? Really high. And I think when you do talk about women's boxing, the first person that people really do say is Katie Taylor. Like, and obviously Chris Clarissa Shields now, like, but she's just done so much for boxing. And I think everyone in everyone that's a female that's in the sport does appreciate her. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Clarissa and Katie Taylor in the same sentence there, because what when you look at when, when it comes to men's boxing, when you look at the pound-for-pound pound rankings, they always say, who's pound-for-pound? Pound? Is it Terence Crawford? Is it Canelo? Is it Usyk? Is it Tyson Fury? Everyone's got their opinions. But when it comes to women's boxing, 
there's two. There's Katie Taylor, Clarissa Shields at the top there. So I'm going to put you on the on the spot, Bree. Who's pound for pound yeah. number one, Katie Taylor or Clarissa Shields? I think that like the facts don't lie. Like obviously Clarissa's like a multi-weight world champion. You can't take that away from her. Um, and what she's a double gold Olymp. I think what she's done is probably makes um more the pound for pound like main female for me but like I do all the right look up to Katie Taylor so I don't want to take no, obviously nothing away from her she's amazing but for me I, I do choose Clarissa Shields Jumping back to you then obviously that's a, that's a very diplomatic answer and a good answer at that because sometimes a lot of people sit on the fence but you, you went straight for it which was good but back to you you've got a fight coming up in November like I said I believe um, what can the fans expect from yourself? Fireworks as always If everyone that really knows me knows that um I am. I, I've. I'm always been a bit feisty. I love. I love a good. I love a good fight and that. So, I always go in with a good, strong mentality to go and put on a performance for for my people because obviously times are hard at minute. So, spending their hard earned money to come and watch me fight. So I really appreciate it. So I, I will go in and put on a good performance for them. You said you're feisty and love to fight. Again, for people that might not have seen you fight or know how you fight. How would you describe your style then? Are you a come forward, aggressive fighter, back foot fighter? How would you describe it? To be honest with you, I do all sorts. I can be aggressive, I'll switch. It just depends on who's in front of me to how I'll be. Mm. And obviously for the fans that are going to be there, have you got anything to say to them that are going to be there on come fight night? Just thank you so much for coming to support me. Like It means a lot, especially where our times are at the minute. And I know that money's not coming easy now. Wait everything that's going on so I just really appreciate it listen that's that's absolutely brilliant Brie. listen this is the first interview but no doubt it'll be the first of many to come if you keep winning keep doing your things and listen this, I'll probably be at one of your shows one day no doubt but thank you so much for taking time out on your Sunday and uh, listen enjoy fight night when it comes thank you and thank you for interviewing me anytime no like I said first of many and I'll speak to you soon yes bye Brie thank you <laughs> I'm going to share something with you that might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.